Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Roswell, New Mexico. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, let's start off with uh, picking up where the last episode left off with Maria and Dallas looking for Maria's mom, Mimi, and she finds her, but her mom ends up dying. Um, I guess maybe it's just a culmination of just her, everything happening. It was, just, it was always just, I guess, a matter of time, just her, like, you know, maybe just her, the the powers and everything finally, like, taking their toll on her. Um and she's telling Maria to, like, you know, kind of rely on your visions. Because she could tell that something was off, that Maria was a little different. But she kept pointing to her hand as, like, right, meet me here or something like that. You have to go here, promise me. And Maria's beating herself up about it later on because she didn't tell her mom. She hasn't told anyone. The only person who knows the truth about her not having her visions currently is Dallas. And now she's blaming herself because she's like, if I had just told Liz the truth beforehand. Maybe I could have done something to get my powers back, and then maybe I truly understand what my mom's dying wish was. Like, I was just so petrified, I couldn't tell her the truth in the end, which Dallas is like, no one can bl no one would blame you considering the circumstances to not be thinking in a situation like, thinking clearly in a situation like that. Because she has everyone around her supporting her, but what really hurt is, and Liz doesn't even know how, uh, she, you know, Dallas is the only one that knows, like, why this would bother her. But Liz is like, at least you have your visions. Because I think she's probably saying, like, maybe with her vision, she could always stay connected to her mom. That was kind of something that her mom was saying, too. And so, it, she doesn't have that. She's also losing touch with not only her history and everything. Because even Isabel being like, yeah, we're sisters. It's like, probably even some of that's getting a little lost. Because the fact is, I'm... I've lost that that connection to my grandmother, um, <clears throat> and um, the powers, and, uh, and she just she's lost a part of herself, and she just kind of doesn't know what to do now. You know, I mean, once again, it's like you add on top of that the fact that you just lost your mom. Like, of course, it's going to sting. And so Dallas wants to support her, but it's like, right, even, you know, and obviously she didn't mean it. She was just lashing out a little bit, but I think Dallas is like, right, like I've got my own powers and my own situation to worry about. Like it, maybe it's like on some level, maybe I am projecting my own issues onto you. So maybe I should kind of pull back on that. But, uh, but we do see later on that Dallas does, he is practicing his powers, but then it triggers something, and I don't know if it's like a vision of the future, because it's like, oh, dad, you dropped something, and it was like a necklace, I don't know if that's supposed to be like, maybe some vision connecting him to his father, or, I was I was almost about to say like, well, you don't think it's supposed to be like, oh, that's him uh, having a vision um, of like, him having a child in the future, or something like that, that's the big question there, so... We'll have to wait and see where things kind of go on that front, but... Maria ends up remembering, um, based on where her mom touched her hand, that it was, a uh, what was it, basically, like, your life and your love life, uh, the lines that kind of intersect, and she was like, right, mom wanted me to go back to her wedding day, and then she finds a picture of of a tree, which that tree is pretty significant because Michael learns about it this episode, is a tree on oasis, but they refer, I think, uh, Clyde and Bonnie refer to it as like a sacred tree, so it's important for for whatever reason, so I'm curious what role it plays into it, because I guess it's, because it, it, the way Bonnie talks about it too, it's like one of the only areas in, um, um, it, I mean, the area Clyde showed him, it's like, yeah, this is a place where either that's just like a memory of what it used to look like, or it's one of the few places on um, Oasis that isn't like burned to the ground, essentially. So, so I'm assuming that tree is still there and it's significant because they have some of the fruit with them. So that's going to be interesting to find out more about it and why, uh, why did Mimi draw it? Like, what is this like? Why? Because even them having that fruit here is probably going to be significant in some shape or form, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, speaking of Michael, uh, spending more time with Bonnie, and then obviously Clyde shows up because he started noticing that Michael's asking a lot of questions. And so, obviously, a fellow troublemaker, there is a little bit of a kindred spirit between him, Clyde, and Bonnie. And the, the fact is that they met 
Jones and he kind of pointed them in the right direction. Um, Because it turns out they were on the ship that crash land here back in Roswell as well, but they've been sleep this entire time just waiting to be awakened. And that's almost a thing, too, for Michael. It's like, well, why did Jones wait? Why did he not know where the others were? He had to have known. So why did he never wake them? Why wasn't it until, like, now? Maybe he had to make all the preparations. But uh, these three are uh, his his followers. They believe in this, once again, this cause. Because basically this all revolves around a machine that apparently Michael's mom made. And that... Uh, Nora apparently, I guess, made a device that could make it so that they could go home. Is what they, at least what Bonnie believes it to be, which is obviously something Michael's been working on his, for a very long time too. So for it to kind of intersect, like him finding out about it and those jewels, like obviously they still have one of them, whereas the, um, this triad has at least the three. Uh, there's still one more piece they need, and that's the one. That Max and them have. So the question is, does it really do what they claim it, or at least what Bonnie believes it does? Because even she says, like, they still keep her in the dark about some of the stuff, so. But I thought it was interesting that Michael still kept that card uh, very close to the vest being uh, Jones's uh, son. Obviously, like, he was trying to make sure they didn't find the tracker ring on him, so he, like, burned in. He's like, right, I'm Jones' kid. I take after my father, and they're like, or, and even Clyde was almost like, holy crap, okay, okay, okay. So, I guess uh, Michael's existence was only a rumor, because at the very least, Clyde is like, yeah, there were rumors that the engineer, Nora, and um, Jones were like a thing or something, or like something was between them, but I don't know if it was really known about Michael's existence, because Michael having that power he does is just, yeah, that's only something him and Jones share, so it just kind of solidifies that. Because whereas uh, Matt tried to play, like, what, in the first or second episode, I think it was just the first, maybe it was the second episode, tried to, like, lean into the whole, like, oh, yeah, like, for a second, like, oh, I'm Jones, but then uh, Clyde ended up seeing through it, so, but Michael still has a card of, like, hey, I'm Jones's kid, so. He was actually going to release uh, Eduardo because they found, well, he found him, but then we also found out a little bit about Tesca's ability that she can mind control people, but it leaves a mark on people, because, like, at least, like, uh, Noah or um, Isabel, like, like the whole si mind control situation, never left like a f uh, an alter of your altering of your DNA the way Tesca's does. It, um, but it's like I think the way Liz explains it later on, it's basically the equivalency of the handprint, like an, maybe an even more powerful version of the handprint because it makes the the control that much more powerful. But I think there's another reason for it too. I think it serves another purpose as well, like link, like having that like DNA connection and that that mutation in, in that regard. I think it, we find out later on about Tesla. I think, I mean, as we can see, they all have multiple abilities. It's not like they're just allocated to just one. So I think Tesla's mind control is one, but it comes with a dual side to it, which we'll talk about in a little. Uh, we'll talk about later. But yeah, Eduardo tells Alex is like yo just um keep up the go like the because if you bail now it's going to like solidify any suspicions they have but you got to kind of double down it's kind of part of like you know the being undercover thing so Alex stays I mean um Michael stays and he ends up getting you know uh more acquainted with them so he's kind of deeper into this uh, sadly, Bonnie ends up kissing him. He's like, whoa, whoa, sorry, I have a boyfriend. I'm super in love with him. And she's like, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of getting used to human stuff. He's like, no, no, I get it. Which is kind of like, you're like, oh, poor Bonnie. But it's like, because she talks about Clyde, like, oh, Clyde, she's like, I don't look at him like that. He's like a big brother to me. But for her, it's like, he's my rock some days, and then other days he's not. Like, he's a completely different person. So I think... It's probably kind of like, it's kind of like Jones kind of being like the cult leader. He like sucks you in, but then you probably also saw some of like the more genocidal maniac size of himself. Um, I think probably like a little bit of like that to a Clyde. She's definitely the one that seems like you could reach the most. Tesca, Clyde seems like he might borderline. I don't know. Like he's I maybe such a true believer to this that it's like, because you even see that with the way he interacts with her. It's just like, yeah, some of the human stuff, he kind of lets slide and have fun with it. But then other times, he's just like, oh, humans, they suck. They're terrible at what they're doing. So, like, you, we've even kind of seen it a little bit of kind of what she's worried about and, you know, concerned when it comes to Clyde. So, 
But Michael is seeing that she is straying further and further away from this. Like, she kind of believes in it, but she's also kind of scared of everything else, you know, in the fold, in the mix of all of this as well. So, we'll have to see where that goes. Liz is investigating the DNA, but every time she tries to do something to the DNA, it ends up, like... Get destroying itself. I thought it was kind of an interesting discovery later on, where basically she says like the it's a defense mechanism. Basically, the DNA the uh, the the samples are playing dead. It's like oh, let me uh like make you seem like make it seem like oh like I'm it's a defense mechanism. But like using someone like one of the people that had been controlled by Tesca, she used her tears to kind of reconstitute it, and it made it seem like, okay, so no, I'm not, I don't need to be in defense mode anymore, and it reconstituted itself as, like, the, the, um, sample it was, because Liz was kind of off her game this episode, because of everything with Mimi, and I thought it was an interesting conversation, because, uh, Liz wasn't letting herself feel it, and Shivani had talked about what they were dealing with when their daughter um, got sick. And it's like, it's kind of like fighting and kind of trying to push through that pain, but not letting yourself feel it. You need to let yourself feel it. Because for Liz, she said, yeah, but it, she wasn't even my mom. But then Shivani's like, yeah, but the way you talk about it, it sounds like she was your mom in all the right ways. Because it's like, yeah, she was there for me and Rosa when we needed her because her own mother wasn't there so it's like because Liz wasn't she was thinking like right my best friend her mom died and yes she was someone that looked after me but she never really thought of like no Mimi was pretty much a mom to me too so she pretty much lost her mom as well and she didn't really let herself feel that and she you know it kind of I think was taking away way because she she even said like this uh, working on this was going to help her um gonna help her distract herself from um, everything with Mimi. I also love that she um, she kind of, her and uh, Max have their moment when he like pulls up that truck from beneath the ground and she, he's like, oh, you're my turquoise. You uh, you keep me um, basically kind of like the um, like flash thing of like Barry and Iris. It's like, oh, you're my lightning rod. It's kind of a, a similar uh, thing in that regard. So with her, with uh, Liz by his side, it gives him better control of his powers. Because it's been kind of slipping out of his grasp recently. Then you have everything with uh, Isabel and... Anasto, or obviously like where things kind of left off last episode. And she's trying to be there for Isabel. But she also feels like, Isabel, there's something you want to tell me, but you're holding back. And Isabel's the one that's like, no, you should take that job offer you're getting. And kind of it's like, right. Uh, she's so scared to tell her the truth. She's kind of, you know, pushing away, literally pushing her to a job that will make her leave Roswell. And it's not until she has a conversation with Cam later on. And, and Cam, because Cam, like, everything with Mimi made her go like, right. Like, people in your life, you can end up losing them. And and Cam's like, just because Max proposed doesn't mean you're going to lose him. And it's like, and Cam's like, oh, you didn't know about the proposal. It's like, no, I didn't. But for her, it's like, right, my brother could summon up the courage to um, tell, um, to propose to Liz. Like, why can't I do the same thing to Anasa, the woman I love? Like, why can't I tell her the truth? Because it's like, right, because if I tell her the truth, she'll. there's a chance as a reporter she might spill it to the world. But Cam is like, do you really believe she would do that? She's like, no, I don't. And Cam kind of breaks it down to being, you um, you don't want to have regrets about things because she has regrets about the Max situation. She was in love with Max. And she's like, if I had actually told him how I really felt, then maybe things would have been different. Who knows how things would have played out, but it's kind of past that point. And even, you know, Isabel's like, oh, I had no idea. And it's like, that's kind of the point, which, you know, I think that also, it's not just an Isabel thing. Uh, Kyle needs to hear that advice too. But with that, uh, it's just after everything she went through with Noah, um, you know, you kind of like want to protect yourself. You're kind of scared of what's going to happen. Like your heart's going to get broken again and you're trying to protect yourself. It's a bit of a defense mechanism using like, oh, her being a reporter is an excuse. But Isabel goes like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And she wants to tell Anasta, it's like, right, I'm going to take you to this cave. I'm going to show you. It's like, okay, where are we going to go with this? And Anasta says no. 
just because it's like she loves Isabel, obviously, but it's like, right, loving someone shouldn't be this complicated. So it's kind of like, right, it's just kind of, I wish, I hope you're happy and you find happiness and Anasta leaves. It's like Isabel kind of missed her shot, you know, missed her window. So I think the same thing of kind of what Cam was warning her about, it's like, right, uh, kind of missed that window of like, yeah, if I told her the truth, how things would have been. And once again, I think Kyle needs to hear that too because he's, you know, he's been sitting on that truth since last season when it's like he needs to tell Isabel how he feels because you don't want to have any regrets of not, you know. And maybe he'll probably be reluctant to do it after everything with Vanessa because it's like, yeah, I don't want to seem like an opportunist jumping in just when you kind of broke up with your girlfriend. Like, I, I, I don't feel right about that. So I'm sure that's going to be um, an element to that. Maybe probably push for him pushing that um off even more telling the truth but um finally circling back the whole uh tesca thing it seems like tesca has the ability to shape shift into people but it seems specifically with people that she's had some kind of that's why it seems like the mind control thing also leaves like a mutation because I guess that makes it so that now that person's eyes are blue, now that there's a mutation in their DNA, not only that I control them, but we now have a, a like a DNA like um, connection and now I can c permanently shapeshift into you because she shows up later on as Eduardo and it's like, wait, Eduardo wanted to stay where he was, so why would he get released? And then also, I didn't even notice until Kim's like, your eyes are brown. I was like, whoa, what's up? And it was like, oh, the tattoo. And you're like, wait, what? And then later on, when Cam um, is shot, I'm like, if she wants Max to go ahead and heal her, I'm like, well, if Cam would know that Max is hesitant about his powers and stuff, that he wouldn't be all too keen about that. So I'm like, I, I felt I was like, something's weird about this. I figured as much. I, knew, I figured something was off about, like, the way Cam was acting in that regard. So... Because I was also like, why would she shoot you? Because it, it, she didn't do that with Eduardo or anyone else. The, the lady, the, the, the lady who had, uh, the truck driver who had gone missing or whatever. It's like she hadn't done that to her so loving. I mean, why would, why would she do that now? Once again, we still don't even know about Alex either. Because they keep calling Alex, but they don't know of his circumstances. So, obviously she hasn't done the same thing to him, mind control him or anything like that. Because his, uh... His form isn't one of the ones she's taken, so she must have him somewhere working on something, or maybe he's meant to be a hostage or an insurance policy, whatever the case may be. But at the same time all this is going down, Kyle learns about a place where like his family's originally from, but he's never been, but Eduardo told him it's just kind of like a tourist trap or something like that, which even Isabel's like, oh, you mean like Roswell? Like, oh, Roswell's supposed to be the tourist trap, but it's uh, truly alien-centric. A A alien central um but he goes to this particular town and he goes to a particular place an address and ends up finding tesca's body in a pod so you go like okay one of two things one does that mean the person that's up is it actually tesca is someone pretending to be tesca because i i guess the real tesca's in that or is she operating from uh, cause it's like, yeah, how can you be in two places at once? It's like, is she a clone too? Like, is, is the, is the Tesca inside, is the Tesca on the outside, the, the Jones, and then like the Tesca on the inside is kind of the max maybe, or maybe it's the inverse. I, I don't know. That's the only re way I can see that. Not unless this has something to do with that, uh, shape-shifting ability or something like that. I don't know. Because I was wondering, like, could it be that someone is, like, it could be, because maybe even Clyde and Bonnie don't know that that's not Tesca. That Tes the, the quote-unquote Tesca is a different alien pretending to be Tesca while she's secretly asleep. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm really interested to kind of dive into that because now she's in front of Max and what this has to deal with Jones's body, like... What, is she trying to resurrect Jones? Is she trying to like force Max to do it? Or what is the plan there? We'll ultimately have to wait and see where all of this ends up taking us uh, next episode. There is no episode next week, but there will be one the following week on uh, July 11th. So do keep that in mind. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.